Welcome to Old Mod 455. We're going to be working on the AMX suspension right now. And it's going to be a crossbreed between a, a street and strip vehicle, minimal street. And just to make it stronger, I was going to go with a Watts linkage setup. And the center of the Dana 60 rear axle is right on that ring gear. This cover is just a little sheet metal cover, not strong enough to just weld a bolt on it and have this pivot point. So I have to make, I got these thicker buttons that bolts will go in and then the rest of the bolts will help carry this whole load. And then I got this contraption here, that's gonna be welded in here and then we'll, as we tack it, keep bending it because I didn't want it to look like a big blocky substance, you know, so it's kind of a teardrop thing. You can see, we got to weld the bolts in the background, but you can see how this contraption is going to work. Where once that's located on the housing, and the suspension goes up and down, this thing will be moving, and it's anchored to the frame on one side, then we got to build a a loop, you know, that I'd use to jack up the car on instead of going on the rear end. Sometimes you want the suspension to drop. So I could just put the jack underneath it and there'd be attachment points for wheelie wheels. But this is a big difference. So when this rear end's going up and down, the top bar is always easy. You know, when guys have a pattern bar, you try to keep that as straight as possible. But no matter what, while it's going through its suspension, it's doing an arc and it's, it's taking your rear end and moving it over to the side as it's going through its travel. More suspension, the more dramatic it's going to be. On a race car, it only moves a little bit. But on here, you got to have a bracket that's at this level and a bracket that's at this level at ride height. Some guys have them with adjustable holes here in the center and they would add nuts in the back. I'm going the other way and having the bolts welded, trying to keep it as close to the housing as possible and it's only going to fit one way. That all comes into play too. Let's say if you had a circle track car and you adjust the height of where this roll center would be, it would control how the car is going to go into corners Well, these things don't even have Zerk fittings, so you just got to lube them up. It's going to get minimal mileage. These are things that you can, before you take it to the race, you make sure every nut and bolt is tight and you lubricate everything. It's a situation when you have a race car, you got to dedicate a lot of time just checking stuff that you don't want to break in the middle of a race. Pulling the sides into it. The real hot setup is from a company called Steeda, I think. Or there was a company called Cortex Racing. And they'll tell you why, I mean, this thing's going to work, but you can look at the disadvantages. Here you're adding weight to the rear end. When they, made, when they build it for, everything's for a Mustang now. And you did, if you would have had a brace, between the two frames, and then if it was slotted, you can adjust it depending on the ride height of the car. Sometimes the car might need to be higher at a certain track, or you know, because you're going to bottom out. And sometimes you can go lower, and it would hug the road better and be better handling. But uh, the track would be smoother. Okay. Well, when you have your pivot point on the rear end and you go over a bump, that's changing heights. Whereas if it was mounted and the pivot was on the cross member, then that weight would have been, yeah, sprung weight, this would be unsprung weight. So you would have less weight on the rear end and it stays at the same point. 
this whole thing, you know, if you were worried about circle track racing, making it for handling, you would want this to stay consistent. Where are you going to notice the difference about having a, a panard bar as compared to something like this that keeps it centered equally from side to side is if you were riding your car and you're hanging out, most tracks do this all the time to race car drivers is because they want to be put to the test. It makes it for an exhilarating ride is they'll have elevation changes and curves. So a lot of races you'll be going uphill and on the hill there's like a off camber and then it changes to a, another curve the opposite direction. Well you can imagine if you've got this bar going like this and the, the thing was turning one way and now you've lifted the car and then it's going the other way the handling is going to get you real squirrely in the tail end real fast. Whereas when you got something like this and it's reacting the same no matter if you turn right or left go on Cortex Racing and you'll see how these guys took a brand new Mustang went around Laguna Seca timed their lap used the same driver the same kind of weather and time and weather you know the conditions of the track and they knocked seven seconds off but they did they changed springs they changed um, shocks and they change bigger brakes so the whole thing was an added you know accumulation of all these modifications that helped but when the guy was going through these corkscrew turns he said that the car was way more planted not scary and sketchy you know where you're not getting traction it just stuck to the track like it was on rails so Another situation is if you're mounting to something that has a gasket area and you're trying to seal this rear cover to the housing, and believe me, there's enough bolts on here, it probably ain't going to happen, but this is what other guys think, is that you're putting all the stress into that rear housing and you're going to be moving that thing around on that gasket area. They're saying that it's going to promote leakage in the gaskets. That's another thing to consider. After I had all these steel things and I was talking about the weight, my buddy here has a lathe and he made all this out of aluminum. And I had just made it in single shear and he didn't like the way it looked and he wanted it stronger so I made another plate and this is this is quarter inch plate and it's steel so I was worried about added weight but what he did with aluminum, with all these spacers, uh, compared to these, what I made, I mean, these, this is, mm, well, there's, eh, a little less than a pound. But it all starts adding up, even the bolts. I mean, I went with three quarter. There's a lot of people that would go with half inch bolts instead of, as fat as I went. So now we're gonna go weigh it. I got all these parts in the box when I bought the car. 16 pounds. 16.2 <laughs> pounds. And you know what a differential cover is like. It's just a light piece of sheet metal. So 16 pounds is a lot of weight. This, these bars will not be total unsprung weight because they're connected to the frame probably, you know, when they weigh a connecting rod, you don't just weigh the rod, you gotta weigh the big end and the small end because they're both doing their own little circles. So, you know, probably about half this weight would be added to the rear end, the rest is supported by the frame. But like I said, I'm gonna take these off because I would've had to have a bar anyway with two of these. So, without the rods, and I would have had to you know, have that weight anyway, that knocks off five. 2.4 with the steel bushings. Doesn't register the aluminum ones. There's still no fluid in it, there's no gasket. 
I just painted it. It's still wet. And these bars aren't welded fully. I'm going to run it through its travel and just paint it at all black so it doesn't rust because we're going to be pushing stuff in and out. But you can see there's a brace in here to tie it off. I can even jack up on this thing and lift the whole car up. And there's, you know, it centers it up. I could knock it right off the, the lift if I wanted. If you buy one that's made and it's going to be for road use and a lot of miles, normally they'd have, like I said, they'd use a different bracket and they got a bearing. I just have bushings made. It's not even tightened up yet because these are plastic nylox. When I finally tighten it, then we'll squirt grease in here and it's good enough for me. I've already been bouncing this. Dennis, and you'll see if I, I try pushing. Now all this is is a locator. It's not a sway bar. But you can see how I can, I can weld those bars up. They're all right. What you'd like is to have the thing with perfectly parallel arms. Now, one that would have a frame mount with a slot, you could jack the car up or you could lower it down and you could still keep the, the arms parallel. If I have to stiffen this thing up because it, you know, goes into like shake, well then my bars are going to be not parallel. And that's, that's what you really want it to be as, as parallel as possible. So like I said, if I ever did it over again, I would have listened to my partner here and made, made it where the frame held the teeter-totter and then went to the, you know, one bracket over here and then one down on the bottom on the foreleg. And then I could have moved the pivot point or that teeter-totter up and down to keep the left arms parallel. Before, yeah, the rear end would flip one way and then the rear end would flip the other way and it's got that locked rear end. It was horrendous trying to push this thing around. Now we can at least just push it up out of the way and then other vehicles can come in here. The next project would be to get the seat situated where you'd be looking through the middle of the window, being able to see the Christmas tree lights and be comfortable.